Hey, this is Erin Lindstrom, and you're listening to Thank You For You. This is a show about celebrating and acknowledging our humanness as well as our beingness, the easy and the hard, the gifts and the (laughs) gifts we don't really like but choose to accept anyway. This is a show about and for people in pursuit of more peace, more joy, more money, more justice, and more of the awe that life has to give us. Thank you for being here, and thank you for you. Hey, welcome back. It's Erin. Today's episode, as always, I'm excited to share with you. It is with Audra Bullock, who is a dear friend at this point. And and honestly, she's someone I look up to, someone I have learned a ton from, um, and I love collaborating with. So Audra is the founder and director of Tidewater Friends of Foster Care, which is a nonprofit based in Norfolk, Virginia, um, that serves vulnerable children in our community, most of which are in foster care or have been in foster care. Um, and working with her, I've been able to kind of bring some of the digital strategies that we use online in business over to the nonprofit sector. So especially this year during COVID, when their big event had to be canceled, which was like an in-person kind of like a carnival meets TED Talks. Um, We recreated this event called Foster Care Aware online. Um, And so if you wanted to check that out, you can look for Foster Care Aware on your favorite podcast uh, listening app and it will pop up and you can actually listen to 40 different episodes with different leaders in the foster care um, arena, also different gosh, we had like foster parents on. We also had biological parents on. We had former foster youth in. Um, Really like beautiful conversations and then also informational. So if fostering is something that has ever been on your heart and you want to learn more, um, definitely check that out or feel free to message me too. I'm more than happy to chat about this at any time. So as I mentioned, Audra Bullock is the founder and president of Tidewater Friends of Foster Care. After an accomplished career in engineering, Audra decided to follow her passion for helping children and founded Tidewater Friends of Foster Care, a 501c3 organization working to improve outcomes for foster youth in Hampton Roads, Virginia. Established in June 2016, Tidewater Friends of Foster Care has a core mission to enrich the lives of foster children through partnering with individuals, area businesses, and corporations to help increase the number of available foster family homes and provide funding for academic tutoring, enrichment programs, and extracurricular activities for foster youth. Audra is a three-time ODU alum, earning her BS, MS, and PhD degrees in electrical engineering from the Frank Batten College of Engineering and Technology. In 2000, she joined the engineering faculty at University of Hawaii, where she was a recipient of the National Science Foundation Career Award, as well as the Hai Ching Chai Excellence in Teaching Award. In 2009, she joined NASA Langley Research Center and worked on space shuttle missions along with other space-borne programs in remote sensing, earning her earning her the NASA Exceptional Achievement Medal. Like, seriously? <laughs> I told you, she's incredible. <laughs> um, both Audra and her husband, Richard Litton, have a strong commitment to community service within Hampton Roads. They support numerous children's initiatives, tutor women seeking their GEDs, and have opened their home to foster and adopt children within the Norfolk foster care system. In addition to leading TFFC, Audra serves as the parent representative on the Norfolk Community Policy Management Team, which oversees the local interagency efforts to serve the needs of at-risk risk youth and their families in Norfolk, Virginia. She also serves on the board of the Old Dominion Athletics Foundation and the Fundraising Initiative Leadership Committee Committee for ODU. So she's kind of amazing. <laughs> All right. With that, enjoy the episode. Yay, Audra, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks, Erin, for having me. Yeah, I'm so excited. So we've talked for hours and hours over the last few years, and I'm particularly excited for this conversation to, I know you'll share some of what I already know, and I'm excited to kind of like, uh, we might go places we've never been before. Cool. (laughs) Yeah, and just kind of like start us off. I ask all of my guests the same question, which is, who are you and how did you get here? Oh, okay. That's a big question. It is. (laughs) So I'm Audra Bullock, 
And um, I kind of like to think that I have an unusual name and an unusual personality and a very full life. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what brings me in front of you. Mm -hmm. um, I, it's It's been a very um, unusual journey to mm -hmm. get uh, to meet you and, and be a friend and a colleague of yours. And I'm um, very grateful for the journey that's happened. But, um, you know, I don't think if I mapped it out when I was entering college <laughs> that I would right. have landed anywhere near where, where I am today. Mm -hmm. I, um, I like to follow my interests. I'm a very passionate person. Mm -hmm. And um, I feel very deeply about you know, social justice um, and human rights uh, always have, but also have this, you know, a keen interest in the mechanics of things, the way things work, a deeper understanding. And so, you know, from from early um, childhood where, you know, I grew up with a, a, a learning disability, I'm dyslexic mm. and, um, you know, always feeling a little bit inadequate and kind of being in special education classes and, and not really feeling smart and not having the self-confidence about that um, drove me to art, the world mm -hmm. of art. So I was really thinking about being an artist as um, a high school student entering college and um, got interested for some reason or another in, in engineering and made the switch. And so that kind of, broad leap is very mm -hmm. characteristic of my personality. <laughs> and I've done a lot of broad leaping <laughs> through, throughout my life. I really have. So in an instant from going to be an art teacher to an engineering major, really over the course of, of having a conversation with a math teacher who said, hey, you know, you're good at math. You could probably do that. Um, and then saying, okay, let's try. And, um, you know, not looking back to, to see how scary that venture might have been. Yeah. To think about it, move forward. And, and from engineering to to going back to art for a little while to going back to engineering and then and then into, into, you know, the I think the field that I, I love the most of everything that I've done, which is um, in the nonprofit world and and helping children and um, families that are at risk. It's pretty incredible the journey here. <laughs> It's kind of crazy. Actually. Yeah. And <laughs> like arts to science, humanity is like, I'm wondering like, and I love this idea of broad leaps that you've taken. Was it hard? Like, did you, is that something that just comes naturally to you? Or were they like decisions that you really like had to think about and go back and forth? Like what gave you the courage to kind of make those leaps? No, it's, it's a, it's a broadly pay. Hey, this looks good. Let's go. <laughs> it, not a lot of thought. I follow my, you know, kind of follow my gut, if you will. Mm -hmm. I, I've had pretty good luck in um, following my instincts. My instincts have been okay, mm -hmm. kept me out of trouble. And I've also early on always kind of uh, accepted the, the mantra of, oops, never mind is okay. You know, you mm -hmm. try something and it doesn't work out. Oops. Never mind. Let's just go a different direction, and that's a lot of security. If you, if you kind of think and you think about it and embrace those words, that it's okay to make mistakes. You learn from mistakes. Everything is is an experience that has mm -hmm. value um, and shapes who you are. So it's kind of hard to make you know inexcusable yeah. mistakes as long as as long as you're you know employing reason and doing the right thing by your core values. And I've always been. And I have been very centered in my my core values of you know uh, helping people is the right thing to do. Selflessness mm -hmm. is is better than selfishness, and um, really caring deeply and thinking um, about uh, the the entire perspective. Kind of always wanting to learn what it, what it is life like for other people that are around me. What is their lens and understanding that it, mm -hmm. mine is just one of the the many options of looking at at um a situation or a problem or or um you know life so yeah. um that that's empowering and then it doesn't feel so scary to take those broad leaps 100 <laughs> percent. that that uh kind of mantra of like oops never mind and like that being okay is wildly radical actually i think if we think about like most homes and where kids are growing up like it's very much this is what you're supposed to be doing and you go get an education and then get a job and like do the thing. And there's a trajectory and that kind of intra intra. Wow. Nope. Interrupts the trajectory with some freedom and flexibility to actually like be true to yourself. 
were you kind of given that like as a kid or is that something you developed on your own? I'm sure it has everything to do with my exceptional parents. I Mm -hmm. had, I'm an only child. I had a lot of autonomy in our family. You know, I had a lot of stake um, uh, in, in the direction that we went as a family, you know, kind of a, um, you know, uh, a a third party to kind of help form Mm -hmm. things. So I was very empowered and, you know, I was always very secure as a child in the knowledge that, no matter what I did, my parents had my back. And I think that that's so important, um, you know, particularly when I look forward to where I am now in the, mm-hmm. in the role of the nonprofit and foster care, that that could be one of the single most important things you can give a child is that secure, sense of security and love that I've got your back no matter what you do. So mm-hmm. just go ahead and try. So it's kind of, you know, in my mind, I envision the toddler who is taking the first steps with mom and dad right there one in front, one in back, and we're ready to catch, um, that they feel confident to do that. Um, Mm -hmm. And and it's going to work out because we're all going to get up and run at some point, (laughs) you know? Right, right. So that idea, so I I love that that kind of comes into uh, the foster care world and helping people kind of step into foster parenthood if that's what's right for them. And really that idea of like, these kids need someone that have their backs the same way your parents had your back to kind of create that like environment of, go figure it out, be true to your heart. And like, no matter what, we're still here for you. Can you talk to us a little bit about like how, so you ended up in the nonprofit realm and actually you and your husband founded a nonprofit. Can you tell Mm -hmm. us a little bit about like that journey to like, why, what, how did, how did this happen? Sure. So uh, at the time I was working uh, for NASA and um, my husband and I had decided to look into foster parenting as kind of an option of family, uh, additional family um, in a second marriage and a way to give back um, or, or pay it forward. Um, and we um, decided we, we licensed and we took in um, our first foster child and, and really he changed everything. He was um, almost three years old um, and scared um, when he came to us and, um, you know, he, he settled in and, and we immediately be- became attached and it became pretty obvious that there were, are some pretty substantial needs um, for kids that are in the foster care system, um, not because the social workers don't want to fill those needs, but because, you know, decades of, of erosion of government resources have kind of left the social service system mm-hmm. with sometimes the inability to to bridge gaps for these kids. And there are a lot of gaps um, just because of their circumstances. So, so we made, uh, you know, we kind of, it was one morning we sat up in bed and we're talking about, Oh goodness, look at the system that before that point, we really had no knowledge of this. It was another broad leap of, of mine that, that I didn't know anything about foster care. I just knew there were some kids that needed some help and I wanted mm-hmm. to help them. Um, and when, when we started looking at kind of the bottom line of things, we immediately came to the conclusion that uh, public resources alone would not do fill the bill. They would not do the trick for these kids. And so we wanted to, I wanted to um, take pause in my job so that I could help fill some of those gaps somehow, some way. Mm -hmm. I didn't know exactly what we would do, but I knew I had, I felt called to do something. Mm -hmm. So again, we take the leap and we just see where we land in a helpful way. And, um, you know, it, it ended up in starting our own nonprofit um, just because, you know, the the agency we licensed with did not have a particular support system at the time that we could set up. So that, you know, we set that up and it ended up flourishing because there is a need um, mm-hmm. for that. So it, it kind of was happenstance. And I had taken a year off of my job really just to kind of endeavor into additional support not thinking I would hang up the cleats, the engineering cleats forever. <laughs> um, but um, about a year in, it was it was going very well. And I had made so many promises to help kids that really needed it. I felt like, well, it, even if my husband and I have to stretch to make this nonprofit work, it's really important. It's an important endeavor to to make work. So so that's that's what we did. And now it's four years later and and I I, I tell you I've never I've done some really cool things. 
in my mm -hmm. career. I've been very fortunate to do some really cool things. Um, but this is by far the most amazing thing that I've ever done. It. I go to sleep full every night and there's a lot of things that I worry about on the personal front for these kids that we help and the families that, that they're in and they're leaving. Um, but um, it, it's a really great feeling to be able to, to help them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about the ways that the nonprofit supports the kids in the Hampton Roads community? Sure. Yeah. Well, first and foremost, um, we recruit. We do outreach uh, to raise awareness of the, the needs of these kids. And we recruit people to come into the sphere to take care of them, not just as foster parents, as you know, mm -hmm. um, as support um, for these kids. And it, this is your phrase, it takes a village. Um, it really does with these kids. And, and um, you know, Erin, I'm so appreciative for you for bringing that concept together for us because our village is very strong now with a lot of um, prospective parents and foster parents and, and people that want to support that entire group. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's a big part of what we do is that awareness piece because it, 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 one organization just cannot spend enough money alone to help really fill all the gaps for these kids. And then on the service front, we while we're trying to recruit and amass this army of folks that will take care of kids, um, we provide, you know, services, including tutoring in the home, one-on-one -on -one, private tutors for these kids. We provide, um, extracurricular mini grants to get the ball rolling on, on activities that will help reduce stress and get kids out into the community involved with, you know, organic mentors like coaches and teachers. Uh, we provide summer camp opportunities, not just for kids that are in foster care, but there are siblings who are outside of foster care as well. And that's a, a bond. I think that's really important to facilitate that social services could never, never do um, uh, in the way that we are able to, to facilitate it. And then we provide um, birthday and and holiday gifts for kids in care because those times are really hard. And I think a lot of people who haven't been involved in foster care might not realize how difficult a birthday can be, even if your foster family is celebrating it. Um, you're away from your parents and, and often these kids carry such emotional baggage that it's a reminder that they shouldn't have even been born on their birthday. And, and we want to make sure that they're acknowledged and they feel like, yes, you are valuable. If, if not to the circumstance that you came from, you are valuable to us as a community. Um, so that's what we do. Mm, it's pretty incredible. Like it really is everything that happens over there. And the way that you bring together different people between tutors and people who want to be parents and just community members who are not ready to be parents or don't have any interest in being parents, but who do share a commonality of caring for the kids who are in our community who can't be with their parents for whatever reason right now. And I think it's such a, a, a humanness thing to be able to you know, remember that like, oh, this is happening and I can do something, whether it's small or big, whether it's financial or time or energy, whatever it is, like we all kind of can do something. And I think we all relate to, um, to kids in this particular circumstance. It, it, you know, it's not, I'm not unique in being called, uh, you know, to foster care by, by heartstrings. I, I haven't met anybody that says, oh, those pesky foster kids, they get more than they need. It's not true. Mm -hmm. You know, people realize that children are vulnerable and that this population of kids is coming from the most vulnerable in our community and they're hurting and people want to jump in and help them. And so it's, it's just been an amazing response and kind of being just the conduit for that is, is what's been, I think the most profound impact that we've had is is bringing together, you know, people who otherwise would never have looked at social services and foster care um, to the table where social services is, you know, in there and doing the, the boots on the ground kind of work and the triage of, of getting these kids into safe places, but they can't be jacks of all trades and they can't certainly do all the outreach that, that somebody on the outside could, could do. So it's, um, it, it's been great to see the community response and to know how much people really do step up and, and say and show that they care. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I imagine that like, this is a lot of work <laughs> and you work for free for the nonprofit. Yeah. Like you, you're donating your time and energy and uh, knowing you and your work ethic, like you work more than full time, I would say. And yeah, right. Like with 
not the weight of all this on your shoulders, but really you're leading all of this. Um, does, I guess the question here is like, when you are compelled to help with something, when you have that kind of like written on your heart of, well, I'm someone who's going to help with this and I'm going to show up. I don't really know exactly what that looks like, but leap of faith and we're going to figure it out. Um, what kind of things do you do to kind of like keep going and to show up when it is hard? Cause I imagine there are stressors of running a business and, you know, making sure you're seeing results. So donors continue to show up and all of that jazz. Yeah. So it's a really good question because there are days where I, I just kind of, I get a little down. There's a lot of hard stories and then it, it feels like you've, you've made a lot of progress, but then you're maybe not making as much progress as you expect to or thought you were. And then you hear a story like, um, I, I'll give you an example. One of our tutors mm-hmm. um, let us know that, you know, one of her clients over the summer she had told that she wasn't sure that she, they would get approval to work together. We have a summer tutoring program and, and you know, we approve kids um, as needed. And the little boy she was working with said, well, I, I want to work with you. And if I have to, um, I'll just pay my allowance so that we can keep going. And, and that's the kind of thing that, you know, it, it, that puts fuel in the tank. Um, yeah. That is the reason that we do it. And it, it's those one-on-one that those very, personal stories because you know there are a lot of kids out there that need help there are a lot of people out there that need help and it's the starfish story right they're they're starfish on the beach and you can't save them all but you know you pick up this one and you throw it back in the water and there's one saved and you've got to kind of take that mentality that that you know that starfish is is better off for for me having stood up and done something rather than do you know nothing because it's overwhelming so I kind of go back and center in that. Um, and, and then, you know, it's a very personal journey for me too, because um, I've adopted through foster care and these kids are my family now. And I look at them and I think about, you know, their lives and, and how different it would have been, um, you know, not for us being there and how different my life would be mm-hmm. for them not being with us. And, and um, it's a lot of motivation there too, because, um, you know, I, I think at the end of the day, is another mantra the, of, of of mine um, is that, that nobody's nobody's throwaway, right? Nobody is is worth forgetting or just leaving behind, right? You mm-hmm. you you've got to look at the value in everybody, and everybody has inherent value, and I think that gets missed sometimes, um, and I, I don't like that when it does get missed. I think we got to see the value in everybody, and that's what makes us great as a society, as a culture, as, and, and be able to rise up together in situations where there's, you know, severe adversity or just everyday life. Yeah. I think for many people, um, they want to help and there's a, a bit of like a hard spot within us where it's actually hard to help because it forces us to like touch a lot of feelings that we don't necessarily want to touch. And we've experienced this, like hosting the table. Um, yeah. If you have, if you have a friends of foster care table at a hockey game, <laughs> people, <laughs> people will approach the table looking excited because it's about kids and then read the sign and see it's about, uh, you know, friends of foster care and immediately avoid eye contact, walk away. And I don't think it's because they're bad people or they don't want to help. But I think a lot of the times it's because this is a lot to talk about and it's a lot to remember is happening. And in some ways, you know, it's the privileged way of like, it's easier to ignore than to actually show up and be like, all right, I'm at the table. I don't know what to do. My palms are sweating, (laughs) but like, how can I help? Right. And, and that's that's the genius of what you did with the village, though, because my ass was mm-hmm. always the hard, big ass, right? That's, that's <laughs> all. Just take a leap with me, right? <laughs> but you brought it in that, okay, just come and have a conversation. You don't have to take a child. You don't have to think about these children. Take some data away and have one conversation with one person. And that's a meaningful um, movement of, of the needle for these kids. That's an important um, yeah. effort that, that needs to happen for these kids. So, so yeah, it's, um, you know, we shouldn't be afraid of helping and, right. and it can get sticky when you help, but you always have the option to say, okay, I've reached my limit of being able to, to give in this capacity. I did something, I feel good about it. And now I can, you know, kind of move on. Yeah. Move on to that next thing for people who are listening and maybe do have it on their hearts of like, mm, this is something I've been thinking about, like, oh, what a coincidence that this is part of this podcast. And now here we are listening. Um, and 
there's never really the exact perfect time to open your home, to open your heart, to kind of take that step into being a foster parent. Right. But can you talk a little bit about like, if you are feeling like maybe this is for me and I'm afraid, like how to kind of navigate that or to know when it's not perfect, but it is right. Oh, that's a great question. So mm-hmm. the easiest way is to visit our website, right? <laughs> right. and um, with Aaron's help, we've launched a prospective parent program that, that is for those people who think that they might be interested, but aren't sure. It's a space where they can explore safely and navigate um, the journey to deciding, you know, how the process, how do I decide if, if this is for me, if it's not for me, if it's not for me, what do I do? Because I still want to help. And this is an environment that um, we can walk that journey with you. So I'm very excited about that program. And there's some friends of foster care training that goes along with it to, for those people who are just interested that they know they don't want to foster, but want to help. This is how, this is how you can do it. So yeah, I think that's a great place to start. Yep. That first step of just like, all right, let's learn more. Let's dig in and get curious and then kind of like go from there. And as, yep. And as far as like, I know within, you know, our local community, And even with like bigger places like Bank of America, like you've had some big um, sponsorships and ways Mm -hmm. that businesses can actually like align with friends of foster care. And we can even talk about this more generally just for anyone who's running a business and also feels like I want to be giving back. I want to kind of like align with an organization. Can you talk a little bit about that and maybe like what you're looking for in, in a business that wants to support the organization or vice versa? Like what should businesses be looking for in organizations? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Those are two very important questions. One, uh, we absolutely welcome corporate sponsorship and partnership in all the activities that we do from the outreach and the foster care aware, which is a, an acute major event that we, we hold where there is opportunity for, you know, uh, corporate publicity um, to, you know, sponsoring our programs, either YMCA uh, memberships, extracurricular activities, tutoring, um, corporate sponsorships of months of birthday gifts for children or holiday gifts for children. So there's all kinds of opportunities, um, including volunteering in those capacities. Mm-hmm. Um, but then to your second question of what should corporations be looking for, I, I think you want to look for an organization that has, you know, strong purpose, um, keen focus that they're not spread too thin trying to be jacks of all trades because I think that that tends to be watered down services um, Mm -hmm. and and um, a little bit of a tricky business Um, but that also have kind of good core values and low overhead and I say that only because I you know I've seen organizations that have a lot of management and a lot of expenses in the management category Mm -hmm. um and a lot of the the, you know the impact that they have in the community is is lower because they're very top heavy and so i i think having a good balance of or a a a big impact in the program side i feel is very important and that's that's one of the reasons why i volunteer all my time um here is so that we can make sure that we are most impactful um, I, I would not want to, you know, be working with a whole lot of office paper for, you know, right, from a, every right. dollar of donation. Um, I would rather a, most of that go to, to impacting the kids. And so I think it's important to scrutinize when you choose a nonprofit, you know, uh, who's running it, how's it run? Because um, I think that says a lot about the services that are offered and the impact it has in the community. Absolutely. It sounds like a lot of it comes down to like the leadership and the choices that are being made. And I think it's interesting just that like there's such a connection to foster parenting and like it's very much leadership in the same way and the choices that you're making to create an environment um, so that the people that we're serving in lots of cases like our children or foster children or kinship care, whatever it is, like it really does kind of come down to like choices. And as parents, we are kind of like the leaders in the life of a child. Yes, we are. So Absolutely. Just, You've got to walk the walk. You've got to yeah, be Yeah. I think it's fascinating how it all kind of like clicks together. So there's um, so much here that I just think is amazing. As far as any, like if for people who are listening and do feel connected to whatever kind of purpose they have, right, wherever they want to make a difference. Um, and also like 
leadership. They're running businesses or running, you know, their homes, their lives, whatever it is. Do you have any like words of wisdom or advice that you would give to anyone who's trying to like make a difference consciously in the world? Uh, sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> not to put I you mean, on the spot you take or anything. it for what it's worth. Yeah. Um, I, I, I like, and I recommend being centered in yourself, boil your decisions down to the simplest that they can be. Is, is this something that is good and, and virtuous and righteous in my eyes? Um, and if it is, then let's try it. You can always reel it back in. Nothing is almost nothing is, um, you know, unfixable. Um, so you can, if you make a mistake, you know, it's a learning opportunity and just go back and try again, but, but really boil it down to, you know, is this something that is, is good. If I, if I wanted to be on the other side of the equation is what I think that that is a good uh, decision to make. And that then kind of gets you down to your core principles and it's, it, it's an easy choice then, right? Mm. You, you boil it down to its most simple. Is this a good thing or a bad thing? And if it's a good thing, I do it. If it's a bad thing, I don't do it. Yeah. I like um, that idea of like, is it good to me? And then what you mentioned too, about like, is it good for being on the other side of the table and actually like taking the time to really think about the other perspectives and the other lives that are being affected. And, you know, especially in this realm of working with children, like these are full lives and families. And so really taking the time to like look around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And to think further than a lot of people who come into foster care are coming in to um, solve a need of their own or a desire to like be a parent. Right. And on the other side of that, there's a whole world that you're stepping into. And so really making sure that we have the perspective of the child and that family and like what's actually supportive to them versus like, it's not just about us. Right. That's right. That's right. Which I think is so beautiful and something that you really like speak to, which is like, you got to check in with yourself to make it right. And then also like checking in on the bigger scale, like how does this all work when we play it out? And once that all is like greenlit, then you have a decision. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Beautiful. Amazing. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for this conversation. Thank you for running Tidewater Friends of Foster Care, for giving your time and your energy and really for doing the work that you're doing in this world. And I can say sincerely, thank you for you. Oh, no, thank you, Erin. And I'm so grateful for your partnership and all that you do with and for us. It's amazing. You've you've been a godsend. My pleasure. Thank you. Hey, it's Erin, and I want you to know that you matter. Everything you're doing and everything you've done, it all matters. It all counts because you are important to the people around you, your family and friends, your audience, your clients, and quite honestly, to the world. Whether you're changing lives on the front line or changing lives while you're changing diapers, your presence matters. Every life you touch counts. And from just one interaction, there can be infinite, meaningful effects. And for that reason, I want to thank you for showing up and doing the work to be with yourself and share your light and your gifts and your love with those around you. If you want support with any of this human being stuff, you're always welcome to join me inside of my coaching membership, Human Being Club at humanbeingclub.com or follow along with me on Instagram for more behind the scenes, silly stuff at Erin Lindstrom. Once again, thank you for being here and thank you for you.